Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the Sly Patch Gaming Podcast, our very first episode. I'm Digital Chimera, you can call me Spencer. I'm Captain Bean, but you can call me Tyler. And uh, we're here to talk about some nerdy shit. Yeah, <laughs> that's what this whole podcast is about, is we, we want to talk about everything nerdy, you know, under the sun. Um, we have ob- obviously our own personal interests that we're, we're really into, but... Uh, overall, this is going to be a variety podcast that you know talks about a, d- a bunch of different things nerdy. We take suggestions, so you know if you if you comment on it and let us know something you want us to talk about, we'd love to talk about those things. Yeah, uh, and we do have uh, plans in the future to bring on uh, bring on guests who uh, are experts in the topic of the day. And uh, yeah, so just a short introduction for those who don't know me. Uh, uh, my name is Spencer. I've been living in the Milwaukee area for most of my for my entire life. Not most of my life. Um, and I've been super into video games, magic, Dungeons and Dragons, everything possibly nerdy ever uh, for as long as I can remember. And my name's Tyler. I'm one of the owners or co-owners of uh, Sly Patch Gaming, as you can see here. Um, we are a uh, gaming and hobby shop, but specializes in Magic the Gathering. That's located in West Dallas, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm not originally from here. Uh, that's why I'm bundled up. You see this guy in a T-shirt, and I'm, <laughs> I'm bundled up. I'm from the South. Nor- you know, originally I- I'm-, I'm from Chattanooga, Tennessee, and it's like nine degrees outside with snow. So this this guy's walking around like it's nothing, and I'm freezing. But uh, you know, I- I've been into Magic since '95 uh, with Ice Age. Um, I'm also into a lot of other hobbies. I, I play a lot of video games. Uh, read comics, you know, things like that. So uh, we're both into a lot of movies, music, you know, you know different pop culture. So we're going to have, a, a, like I said, a, a variety of subjects that we're going to talk about. You know, maybe one of the shows you're not that into, you don't listen to, you don't watch, that's fine. Uh, but maybe, you know, there's a, a bunch that you are into. So that's what we're hoping for. Yeah. And uh, another thing, you know, if, uh, if a particular thing interests you, whether it's something we've talked about already, you want us to talk about or just this episode feel free to uh comment we we want that community community engagement we want to you know create a dialogue not just between the two of us but also everyone who either plays at the store or listens to the podcast or just participate in the same things we like to participate in so be sure to be be sure to share this with everyone you know. Yeah, exactly. First po- sure. first podcast, you know, you're, you're gonna hear us, you know, trip over our tongues a lot and stuff like that. But you know, oh, rap god. Yeah, you know, that's 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 the fun part about it. Absolutely. But yeah, be sure to share this with uh, other nerds you know and other people who uh, appreciate the um, the uh, the fun stuff that's out there that we like to talk about, and uh, we hope to uh, do a good job. Yeah, so Spencer, you know, Spencer's going to introduce us on, on our, our different segments here. We, we do have some segments, you know, that we try to do, um, you know, a little bit at a time. Uh, but Spencer's going to, you know, give you kind of the breakdown on that as we go through each of the segments and let you know what's coming up. So what's the first thing that we like to try to do here, Spence? Well, first, we've already done it. The ready-up section uh, for whenever you get into the gaming lobby, you gotta you got to start somehow. And uh, that's just going to be us introducing ourselves introducing the topic and today's topic primarily topic uh is going to be um talking about our experience with lgs's obviously you own one and i've been playing at them for eight years almost yeah so we'll get into that later but next we've got our warm-up round and this is where we like to talk about something positive because one of the things that i hate in the gaming community and and other communities is a lot of people are so toxic and negative and i don't want any part of that i want to i want this to be a positive experience i want to create a positive environment to draw more people into the things that i like to do the whole win at any cost attitude is is something that you know especially this live patch for example you know like we have our friday night magic as you know, you've been a part of it, and we separate our our um, you know commander pods into you know competitive versus casual. Like if you're if you're that one at any cost, you want to be super competitive. Hey, you know that that's the way you have fun playing Magic. Awesome, but you know if you're just the guy that's like, hey, I bought a precon and I put like four cards in it. You know, <laughs> I don't want you going up against you know Thrasios Temna and just you know getting stomped on turn three. <laughs> and so uh, you know we try to separate that and. 
but even beyond like you know, to to the extent of what you're saying is like you know we, we want to add positivity we want we want to have fun with things because you know the majority of things like that we are going to talk about is you know has to do with gaming of some sort and games are meant to be fun they're meant to bring us together they're meant to you know take out all the differences in our lives and and and, and let us you know especially like with D D. yes you know, we do 100%. role playing you know it's like hey i get to be something that i don't get to be every day you know, um, you know, you got your dice rollers that just want to be there to roll dice. You got your people that are super into the role play and want to be like, hey, you know, I get to be a, a, a tiefling warlock, you know, whatever, you know, that, that, with these superpowers that I've never had before. You know, whatever it happens to be. Um, so, yeah, that's, so that's what, you know, with the warm-up round is, you know, talking about, like, so just like in gaming, you know, Let's say you play, you know, Call of Duty or Smite, like I'm, I'm really into. Which we will have an episode on Smite. I will tell you guys that if you guys are into it. If you're into MOBAs, we're gonna talk about MOBAs at some point. But uh, you know, sometimes you want to play that warm up game. You know, you don't want to just jump right into the ranked lobby. You know, you want to be like, hey, let's play this warm up game. Let's you know get our skills going, stuff like that. So you know, uh, for today, Spencer, you know, what's what, what's your warm up topic, man? Let's, let's talk about something positive going on in your life. So, the warm up is all about just. Whatever positive is going on, whether it's something related to us or just in our personal lives or any of that kind of thing. And for me, I'm really excited. I just started going back to school. Uh, I'm going for uh, an associate's degree in uh, web and software development at a, at a tech college uh, about a half an hour from me. And I'm only like two weeks in and I'm so happy to be back in school, you know. I went into a semester of uh, formal, like, four-year bachelor, regular college um, right out of high school, and it just wasn't for me at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I went into the workforce after that, and I just kind of worked on myself, and it's finally time for me to get back into it. And for the first time in my life, I am excited to go to school, and it's just going great. I'm just so happy. And that's awesome. And, you know, that's one of those things, you know, that, that people need to realize in, in life. You know, I'm there's a huge age gap here, which, by the way, we, we didn't talk about. So I, I'm, I'll be 38 next month. Spencer is... I'm going to be 22 in, in a couple months. Exactly. So, you know, we, we, got, we got a huge generational gap there. And, you know, speaking from my experience, you know, when I was younger and, uh, you know, going to school and things like that, like, I didn't go to school until a little bit in my mid-20s as well because, you know, getting out of high school, it was like, you know... You think you know everything, first of all, and then you know, you're like, hey, you know, I want to live some life, and um, you, know, you live some life, and then you, know, you get to that point like you're at, it's like, hey, I want to you know, further my education, get myself in a better position to, uh, to do the things I want in life, and you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes that break is good. Now, now, it's not to say that you know, those that go straight from high school into college, get your degree, you know, you're done by 22, there's nothing wrong with that, because you know, sometimes it, you know, it's just more efficient for you, it's the best way, you know, it's the best path. You know, follow your path. That's that's the big thing that we, we want to make sure, you know, that people understand is follow your path, have fun. So, you know, it's great that you're, you know, back in school, man. That's awesome and, and that's a good thing. So, you know, positive thing from our standpoint, and this kind of speaks into our main topic today, but being an LGS owner, um, you know, we we uh have to pay our, we have to pay our taxes a little sooner than you guys. You know, you guys gotta um you got till April, we got till the end of January. So, you know, got my taxes done. I uh, got all good. got all that stress off my back, um, so happy to be you know you know done with that stuff. Um, you know, it's traditionally January is like the slowest month of the year for us. Okay. Yet we have an amazing community here in the Milwaukee, you know, and especially West Allis area, um, and our sales are actually projected ahead of some of our other months already. So That's it's awesome. like. You know, to, to have that happening, because usually you have the lag between, like, everyone spent all their money on Christmas, they're waiting for their taxes, so January is just that lull month, but uh, we've actually been killing it this month, so super happy for that, super happy for our community that we have here, um, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's my positive thing for the day. All right. Well, on towards the meat and potatoes, or what I like to call the campaign of today's episode, and that is LGSs. LGSs in general, yeah. So, if I remember correctly, this is not the first LGS you've owned. This is not. I have, I've been a part of LGSs on and off for well over a decade. Again, you know, the, the generational gap, the age gap. Um, I've been a I part was a of schooler at the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like I, I have owned a couple of LGSs prior to this. I've also worked at LGSs um, 
you know, in the past. And, um, and then my, my, my personal experience of why I'm even, you know, involved in the whole community in, in general was like, I was lucky enough to have an LGS. And for those that don't know that acronym, LGS stands for local game store. Um, so it's, you know, game, it's a game, yeah, it's a, it's a game <laughs> store that's local to you. Um, it could be 20 miles away. It could be two miles away, but I was lucky enough to have one a few blocks from my house and I could escape there, you know, as a kid. So as a kid, I would be able to walk down the street, you know, if, if parents were having a bad day or if I even had a bad day, you know, stuff like that. I go in there, I'd either play magic, which was what I did mostly, or, you know, there's a bunch of D and D campaigns that I was in at certain times. And you just get to escape from the world. You know, you, you don't have to worry about what religion, what creed, what race you are, you know, sexuality, you know, anything like that. Nothing mattered at that point because we were just there to play games. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's something that I've loved and, and what's brought me, you know, to doing this for, you know, for people. Um, yeah. Providing that space for other people in case they're having a bad day. Absolutely. You know, that's, that's, that's what drew me to it, you know, with COVID happening like it did. Um, you know, I, I was a, you know, quote unquote, just like, you know, basement dealer, you know, for almost a year, I would buy collections from people and flip. So I mainly, again, I mainly deal in Magic the Gathering. Uh, for those who play it, you know, it's, um, there, there's a lot of money to, to, to be had, you know, depending upon how you do things. Um, it, you play a lot like the stock market. There's even a website called MTG Stocks where like, you know, you can look at the, the fluctuation of cards prices and stuff like that. And I spent a lot of time, you know, buying collections from people, reselling them, you know, stuff like that. That was my work. And I technically made a lot more money than I do now. Um, you know, people think, you know, oh, you're a game store owner. You know, you, you own your own business. You must be making a killing. It's like, no, I, I got rent. I got <laughs> overhead, like, you know, things like that that, uh, that I have to pay for. But um, there were so many people in the community because of the other game store that I was, you know, associated with prior to COVID. Um that were like, man, we, you know, we really enjoyed you running a shop and we really w would like for you to be back. So, you know, you know, have you thought about doing it again? And, and of course my partner, Andy, which he'll, he'll be a part of an episode at some point, you know, um, we, we got together and we were like, you know, we, we, we formulated a plan for what we thought the area needed, which was a magic focused store. Cause we have some great stores in Milwaukee, you know, like again, you know, Sly Patch really Gaming good. is mine. Um, but there's a lot of other great stores. You know, we got places like Battle Brothers that focuses on 40K. Mm -hmm. You know, like they, they're huge on 40K. Um, there's uh, Games Universe, which is owned by, you know, Andy Rowe. Um, they have some, you know, some great things going on. Um, where else do we have? We got. Uh, I, I always used to uh, go to the Barrister. Yeah, board Barrister. Board Game Barrister. Board Game Barrister. You know, Board Game Barrister has a ton of stuff. You know, their name, you know, is fitting because you can go in there. There's all kinds of board games in there. It's awesome. Board games all over the place. Yeah. So, I mean, we have um, a ton. We have Cowabunga that's all the way out in uh, yeah. Oconomowoc. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a little bit more of a stretch, you know, than, you know, but it's still considered, you know, the Milwaukee area. So, oh, and then Falklandia that just opened down, yeah. down on the south yeah. side and Pink Bunny. Mm -hmm. um, Big Bunny is a, is so a go to. We have a ton. We have a ton of like great local game stores um, that you can go to around here. But one of the things that we noticed, you know, for myself and my partner was that we were lacking a magic focused store. And that's so that's that's what we wanted to do was, you know, focus you know, more on magic. You know, we still offer other games, you know, Flesh and Blood, Pokemon, Yu Gi Oh! Uh, board, you know, different types of board games and stuff like that. D and D, of course, you know, D and D is huge um, in the area. Um, but yeah, we wanted to focus on that. And so, uh, after I had, you know, uh, a ton of people, and when I say a ton, like you know, more than a hundred people asking me, you know, hey, are you going to open up another store? You know, are you going <laughs> to run another store? I was like, well, I guess this is what I'm meant to do. So, hey, you know, when the when the pieces fall where they do. You just got to pick them up and put them in the right spot. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, uh, you know, we, we we love you know the store that we have. Uh, our location is fantastic. It's uh, for those in the Milwaukee area. If you see this, we're located at the corner of Highway 100 National, uh, right in front of the Home Depot, right next to the Taco Bell. Um, it's you know a huge, very busy intersection in Milwaukee. There's a bunch of food around there, which is another reason why we picked it. Because as you know, talking about you know, LGS things. <laughs> You know, gamers, we, we want our food. You know, I mean, you can see me at Spencer, you know. <coughs> we're, we're, we're not, you know, we're not twigs. Um, and, you know, we, we love to have our food around, you know. And so that was one of the, you know, primary reasons that we picked the location that we did 
was we wanted to have you know access to the things that you know our, our player base wanted. So um, yeah, we're, we're we're very happy um, with where we're at. Uh, just a shout out to that you know so we're we're connected to another business um, in there. My uh, my landlord and friend, his name's Jason, uh, is the owner of a company called the Shoebox. Uh, the shoe box is for those people who are into like the high end shoes. So if you're into, you know, that type of market as well, he's had, he has a business opening up hopefully at the end of this month, maybe towards the middle of next month at the very latest. Um, uh, but it's a club, you know, it's a clubhouse. So like they have things, they have, a, he's got a pool table in there. He's got a jukebox, uh, that also is a photo booth, which is really cool. You know, stuff like that. So he has those things going on. Um, so if you guys are into shoes, you know, check out the shoe box, but located right next to us um our address just to shout it out is 11 uh 045 west national avenue by the way in west Dallas. but so so you know I, my question to you on this you know because i want to you know i've been talking for a little bit here mm-hmm. um is you know what originally got you into going to game store you know your, your local game store like what what was it that drew you to your local game store yeah and you know I I think that this is the case for many people. I think uh, I think people who go to an LGS fall into two categories, and I am one of them. I think the first kind is they just walk in and like what they see. They mm-hmm. just happen upon it, whether it's near them or uh, they're they're looking for some place to do their nerdy outlet, whether it's Dungeons and Dragons or Magic or Yu Gi Oh or whatever. Um, I think I think there are people who are just looking for a place like that, and they happen upon it, and they like what they see, and they stick around. The other kind yeah. is just being dragged along by a friend, and that's what happened to me. I um. Back in, when I was still in high school, I think I was a sophomore at the time, um, uh, my my friend Bryce, who plays at Slypatch, actually, um, he started to get me into Magic, and uh, it got me into Commander after that, and then I started, uh, he, gave, uh, he gave me his uh, Tristani deck to run at Board Game Barrister on F&M, and, and our little ritual would be, uh, at our high school, we had a, um, we had a, a little F&M club, uh, w- one of our teachers, uh, Mr. Kinsey, he actually was super into magic, and he would host, after schools on Fridays, three to five casual magic in his oh, yeah. social studies classroom. That's awesome. That's how I got into magic, and then, after that, Bryce's mom would pick us up, me, him, and Kean. We would go to Bryce's house, they'd feed us, and then we'd he- head over to Board Game Barrister and play until like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. And that was so fun. I did that every Friday for at least a year and a half, maybe even two years. Yeah. And I just got enveloped into the community that way. And ever since I started getting into Magic there at Board Game Barrister, I've gone to other LGSs. Uh, Board Game Barrister used to have three locations. Now it only has two. Um, mm-hmm. But I've gone to all of their locations. I've gone to Citadel Games. I've been to Games Universe. I've been forgot about Citadel. All yeah. all kinds of places in the area, and I've even traveled, whether it's for like Gen Con or something, and gone to LGSs in Indianapolis or wherever I end up. Um, because it's just you kind of develop that sense of community mm-hmm. and that sense of community in an LGS it's not always the same everywhere you go but it's pretty damn similar yeah the kind of person who goes to an LGS in Milwaukee is going to be the same kind of person who goes to an LGS in California or in New York or in Boston or in Indianapolis and yeah. so even though we're so far apart you have something to look forward to kind of no matter where you go, which I think well, and, is and, really awesome. And I can actually speak to that, you know, since you know, you've know you grown up your entire life here, you know, and I'm, like, again, I'm originally from Chattanooga, Tennessee, so to shout out some of the game stores that, you know, influenced me back in Chattanooga. So for those in the Magic community, you may know Mr. Derek Sheets. Uh, Derek Sheets is, um, he, he's a uh, Star City Games Invitational winner who is actually on the Swan Song token. 
Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so my boy Derek's on the Swanson token. A cool story there, just a little bit of history. I was the first ever person in Chattanooga to have one because mm. I happened to be there when he wasn't and opened his mail. <laughs> <laughs> So me and Richard Baxter, if you know, if you ever happen to see this, Richard Richard was working for him at the time, and the package comes in. It's a big old package, you know, big manila envelope, and we open it up, and it's all Derek's, you know, it's all of his uh, tokens. And I'm like, I'm taking the first one, like I'm gonna claim that I have the first one, and I got it even before Derek got his own token. So oh, that's hilarious. Oh yeah, it was, it was fantastic. Oh, that's so um, funny. So you know, game. So his, his store in Chattanooga. You know, if you're from the area or anywhere close, uh, is Game on Chattanooga. Um, there's my, my friend, uh, my friend John, um, and I'm sorry, I forget his partner's name. I f- feel really bad, uh, but they own Infinity Flux, which was actually, I mean, was, was within walking distance of where I lived out there. Um, we have Epicos Gaming, which is owned by my friend Henry Flood. Henry's actually someone who I was going through a really tough time at one point. Um, I'd owned a couple game stores I told you about and, you know, had an issue where, um, long story short, bought some inventory from a guy that was in bankruptcy, didn't know, um, a huge amount of you know, inventory, by the way. Um, six months later, they show up and they tell me they got to take the inventory back, you know, which, which set, you know, as a, as a, a, as an upstart business owner, you know, it was a very huge hit to you. So I ended up having to, you know, drop out of the business at the time. And then Henry had opened his business and... Um, I'd been going there to game with my friends, and he he knew that I had an experience and stuff like that. So Henry gave me a job working at his store, uh, which was awesome. Um, and then if you go a little bit further south into Northwest Georgia, the largest game store that you're going to find in the Northwest Georgia area is Battlegrounds Games and Comics in Dalton, Georgia. It's uh, owned by Michael Gunter and Jason Mathis. These guys were influential to me for a couple of reasons. They were friends of mine. They were actually uh, players at one of my stores oh, really? pri- prior to that thing happening, right? Uh, really good guys. And then, you know, the, the stuff happened that happened. Uh, and they decided to open their own store. You know, we, you know, um, they had offered me a, a position to, to try to partner with them. But I, I wasn't ready to do it because of what had happened. And, um, and they are super successful. Again, if you go to the Northwest Georgia area, go to Dalton, Georgia. Check out Battlegrounds Games and Comics. Uh, you can find everything there. And when I say everything, it's like they have all your card games, all your board games, you know, comics and stuff like we talked about, but they have like action figures. I'm talking about like you want some like 1980s GI Joes and like Transformers wow. and things like that. They have all of that. They have a free arcade room there. Um, again, That's pretty sick. oh, it's it's awesome. Like it, it's definitely <laughs> That's the dream of every LGS owner. I mean, I will tell you right now, like my goals. You know, we we have a way smaller space than what they have. You know, right now. But eventually, you know, is to be... That's the aspiration, isn't it? it? Exactly. 100%, you know, is to provide that type of level of access to those types of games and things like that, like like Michael and Jason do. So, um, yeah. So, anyway, you know, that's just a shout out to a, a few people there. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, so one of the things I want to talk about since, you know, LGS things is, you know, what we're talking about is the, important of, the importance of your LGS, you know, versus just buying randomly online. You know, so like, and just me as an owner in general, um, you know, I try to give people deals, you know, on things and, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, other people that patronize the store know, um, you know, maybe you can go on TCG and find it for, you know, $10 and then maybe I'm selling it for 11 in my store. It's like, well, there's, there's a couple of things there, you know, a, you know, you had to pay the shipping and you're you're not thinking about the shipping cost that you're missing out on, right? You got to wait a couple of weeks to get it, you know, that kind of thing. Whereas the convenience factor, but also, you know, if you come to me and you're like, Hey man, I can get this on TCG for 10. Can I get it for 10 today? You know, a lot of times I'm going to be able to get like, Hey, yeah, you can. Um, but supporting your local game store, what that does beyond, you know, buying online is like, it gives you that place to play. It's true. You know, like I said, you know, I, I made a ton more money (laughs) without the store itself. Um, you know, and, and, and I, I will still like, even, no, no, I mean, you know, even if I get to the point where Michael and Jason are, I don't know that I would still make more money than what I was making, you know, doing what I was doing. Um, but people like myself and like my partner, Andy, you know, Michael and Jason, who I know personally, really great guys, you know, we do it because we want to provide that for people. We it's want true. to provide the, you know, that safe haven, that that place where people can go and escape the real world. You know, <laughs> it's like, you know, you you can be 
you can be the chimera there. You know what I'm saying? Digital chimera, you know, as opposed <laughs> to having to just be Spencer. You know what I mean? True. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of, you know, the importance of your LGS, you know, from my personal perspective. And that's not just from being an owner. That's from someone who's, who's you know, frequent in LGSs for many, many years is, you know, without those, we wouldn't have had, you know, the outlets that we did. And, um, and, and you know, my life would have been way different, you know, had, had I not had that, you know, especially, you know, with my background of growing up, you know, in, in, in you know, basically poverty you know yeah. things like that like yeah. we talked about you know like uh you know it was something that you know i could go in and i could play and not have to you know it didn't cost me a whole lot of money and have fun and you know like i said escape from you know the, the realities that i was dealing with at the time so yeah and you know even for me like i i didn't start going to lgs's until i'd say probably late 2014 you know maybe i think it was late 2015 I started going to uh, Board Game Barrister for the first time. Even that, like, I didn't start going when I was super young, but even just since then, that is seven years of my life going on eight. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine how different my life would be right now if I hadn't gotten introduced to that scene. Yeah. Like, it would be starkly different. Uh, My buddy Bryce, who got me into playing Magic and got me into going to Board Game Barrister, through that, I made a connection with my current friend, good friend of mine named Marcus. And Marcus, they then got me into Dungeons & Dragons. Mm -hmm. All of the friends that I have now and hang out with, I would not know if not for having gone to Board Game Barrister that first time. I would never have made a friendship with Marcus, and Marcus introduced me to their D&D group, which is all of my current friends, except for other people that I've met through the LGS system, like Tyler. Like, and, you know, I just, it's like, where would I even be? I have no fucking clue. I'm actually, it's actually, like, I mean, it, it might be fine. Well, actually, you know, but it's, it's, it's really funny that you're bringing that up because you know we, we actually probably should have started there. Is how we met. That's true. You know, that's, that's yeah, actually we, how we met. Was, we met at Board Game Barrister. Yeah, uh, I, Sunday Commander at noon. I had literally just moved to Milwaukee. I had been here for maybe a couple of weeks. Um, I go into board game. I I actually had left my Magic collection back home. Oh, I, yeah, I, I forgot about that. Yeah, I, I didn't even have any magic cards at the time. Well, didn't you buy a pre con to play yeah, that yeah, day? That's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's that's why I went there. I went there. I went there to buy cards. You know, and then you found, guys. and then you found out that they were having a commander event that day. Yeah. right that right at that exactly. Time. Yeah, so I, I literally, I literally just bought a pre con so I could sit down and play because I've been playing for a long time. So I was like, you know, whatever. I'll just you know, yeah. sit down and play this pre con. And um, yeah, that's how me and you know Spencer met. Was like we got in a pod together. Uh, we met each other, you know. We, you know, we, we both had really great attitudes. So did the other people in our pod. I don't remember who those people were, unfortunately. Right, right away. I don't remember the the specific people, but man, the people who used to play at Sunday Commander at that at that barrister, that was a good group. Oh, of it was. People. It was I, great. I love all. It was a great of group of people. Miss, like you know, it, 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 it was it, that was the thing. Is like, again, I'm from out of town. I've never been, you know, never been to a store here. Like it was my very first experience in a store, and like you said, no matter where you go. Like the majority, of the, the majority. Like you can't say everyone. Yeah, obviously. it's it's not going to be ever a hundred percent. But but the majority of the people that you meet are are very much similar to you know, to yourself. You know, like and, and, and things like that. And so, I sat down, met Spencer. He was one of the first friends I met here in Milwaukee. Um, which that was that was almost four years ago. So you weren't even. You weren't even legal at the time. <laughs> you were close. Uh, I was close. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I was still in. You're like seventeen, eighteen. You were. You were like. It was probably. No, I would. I think. I think it was the summer of twenty eighteen because I had graduated. Yeah. Because I'm. I'm. Well. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Because I moved here April of eighteen. Yeah. Was, okay. Yeah. That's when I moved here. Because I started playing Sunday Commander that summer. Okay. So it was more than a couple of weeks. It was so, maybe a couple of months. But yeah. yeah. A couple, you would have been here a couple of months. And uh, yeah, no, I had just graduated. Uh, yeah. I, I just graduated high school. Just yeah. turned 18 a few months ago. Yeah. So. And, and, didn't, and that's, that's, that's one of the other points I want to bring up about LGS is it's great. Is again, having the, you know, we have this age gap, right? We, you know, we're 16 years apart. 
you know, in most situations, we wouldn't hang out. Oh, totally not. You know, like if I met, you know, if I saw you at a totally bar, like not. you just turned twenty two and I met you at a bar, you know, I'm like, oh, dude, he's a kid. You know, he's, yeah, like, he, we, right. We, you know, we, we don't have, you know, there's that generational gap and all this, right? But because of LGS's, like I see you as a peer. Yeah. You know, totally. I I don't view you as some young kid or anything. I, I view you as a peer. Mm-hmm. I view you as someone you know on that same level as me, which is great. You know, it, it gives you that. That's the great thing about LGS is, is it gives people that ability to connect on a on a level that's completely different. That yeah. again, where we don't worry about our age, our creed, our you know, our religious you know beliefs, whatever, anything. Mm-hmm. None of those things matter because hey, we like to play this game together. You know, and that's that's one of the things that you know draws me to gaming for yeah. sure. Yeah, and you know, um, something you were mentioning before about how, you know, there's this generational gap with different players in this community. The, the Like I was talking about, all the friends that I hang out with now that I met through my buddy Marcus, um, I am the youngest by a large margin. Uh, Marcus is only a year older than me. My buddy Brad is only two and a half, three years older than me. Uh, everyone else is in their 30s. Yeah. <laughs> Every single other person in that friend group is in their 30s now, and that's fucking crazy to me. Yeah. It's like they're all, like, I, I have an older brother. He's six years older than me. He's he's uh, Great guy. He's 28 now. Don't, he's he's if, awesome. If you see this, though, I didn't say that. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, and, you know, it's weird because, like, I've always viewed my brother as, like, a sort of, I don't view him as a peer, or I didn't for much of my life. And he, yeah, he, he, went, was, he, he was the older brother. Yeah, like. he was the older brother by six years. Yeah. So he had always a position of authority over me. And he goes off to college. I start making friends who are older than him. I view as peers. And when he comes back from college, it's this weird dichotomy because I, I picture him as an older authority person in my life. And then, but he's younger than most of my friends. Exactly. And then he over over the last few years he's become more of a peer because of that which you know I think that happens in family relationships well, like that I, I, eventually it, anyways but like yeah. it was yeah once was you become adults w- once you become adults and, and when I and, and it's it has nothing to do with age at that point cuz like for example I am the middle child I have four sisters I'm the only boy so I have two sisters who are 6 years and more older than me and then I have one sister that's like a year and a half younger. And then my youngest sister is like 14 years younger than me. Oh, wow. You know? Um, and yet, you know, it's, you know, when we all started to grow up, you know, like like my oldest sisters, for example, like Terry and Chanavi, those are my older sisters. Like, they remember like babysitting us and stuff, you know, and yeah. like making us breakfast on Saturday mornings and stuff like that, you know, things like that. And, and seeing us as like little, you know, little kids, you know, and it wasn't until I was like my mid to late twenties before my older sisters finally like, Hey, you know, recognized me as an adult, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, so like you said, you know, that, that dynamic for people changes, you know, d- based on different years and different things like that. Um, but yeah, like, like you said, it's really cool that your brother comes back after, you know, after you've had this LGS experience, like you said, you know, with meeting people, you know, like myself, who's older, you know, other people that are your friends. And it's like, Oh, you know, my brother's not that much older than me, you know, like I, yeah. like I thought, you know? Yeah, because, you know, all the people who I consider to be not necessarily the same age as me, but my peers, you know, they're... If my brother's six years older than me, they're more than six years older than him in some yeah. cases. And it's like, it put it put things into perspective for me. And, you know, the the age gap just doesn't matter, which is so... And, and, and cool. Exactly. I mean, and it, it offers different perspectives when you're sitting at a table just playing games, or if you if you actually get into talking about life, which you know some people like to do, some people don't. Some people use it as escape, as we've discussed. But you know, some people like to uh, you know explore what else well, there is, is to talk about. It's too. a natural progression in friendships. That's the thing. It's sure. like you know, you first start out like all you really talk about is the shared interest and things like that, and then as you grow closer as friends, and yeah. You know, sometimes you talk about more, more in depth like life stuff, um, but then you know that's the thing is like you said. Sometimes you get to see those differences in opinion. Being someone who's twenty two, who, and again, just so you guys know, again, I'm thirty eight. My my background's in psychology, stuff like that. So I don't judge anyone based on their age. You know, people people can be more mature at sixteen than some forty year olds. Like I've, I've seen it in life, but 
there is a difference in life experience no matter what. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, sure. you know, your life experience and like what I've experienced, what I've gone through, the people I've met, the people I've seen, you know, things like that. And so you get to, you know, you get to, you know, you know, you know get that perspective that some people wouldn't get. You know, because again, in, in any other situation other than a game store, you know, like what other situation can you think of you know, other than like a sporting event, maybe, you know, like maybe you go to a sporting event or something and you meet somebody older, mm-hmm. but like any other situation other than the game store, where would you see yourself, you know, becoming friends with me? You know what I'm saying? With, 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 with the age gap that we have. Yeah. I, you know, and funny you talk about experience. I don't have a lot of experience in other things. So like, I guess maybe work, maybe if you worked with them. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, I, I consider a lot of the people I work with friends, but not the same kind of friends, too. Yeah. Right? Like, I don't hang out with any of my work I friends. I mean, you could, you could, I, de- you could, could develop those relationships. I could, yeah. But, but maybe, but, but, the, but, the LGS, but, but the LGS lets you know how much more you guys have in common, True. you know, faster, and, and, it, and it helps develop those relationships mm-hmm. a lot more broadly than, than some of the other places do, right? Because, you know, yeah, like... I mean, I can't speak to my work relationships because I work at the LGS, right? Yeah. But other other places that I've worked, for example. Um, now, I have a great friend, uh, Mr. Jack Taddy. Love you. The Mac Daddy. He was actually the best man at my wedding. Oh, um, nice. I met him. like So when I first moved here, in that gap between working with um, LGSs, I worked at Mattress Firm. And, and I ended up eventually becoming you know, their you know, sales trainer and stuff like that. But his wife, Miss Holly, love you, babe, um... What, which was also a bridesmaid of my wife's, uh, was my trainer. You know when I first got there, oh, okay. and then it's funny. So I, I told you I left all my magic stuff behind. Right, I'm moving to Milwaukee. The only person I know here is my wife. Okay, very first day working with Holly, and she sees my tattoo. So I have a tattoo. If you guys want to see here on my wrist, which is a Magic the Gathering tattoo, she sees my tattoo. And goes, do you play Magic? <laughs> yeah, she goes. She was like, "My boyfriend," because they were boyfriend. You know, they weren't married at the time. My boyfriend plays magic. I'm like, "No," <laughs> you know. So I'm like, "Are you serious?" Like, I left everything behind because I didn't think I was going to meet anybody. Oh really? Oh, so you left everything behind because you didn't think? You well, were because gonna... the only person I knew was was my wife. You know, at, yeah. When I moved up here, oh, well, and her parents, you know, her family, whatever. Yeah. But I didn't know where any of the local game stores were. I didn't know, you know, anything. So I, I thought I was going to be focused on, you know, building this life with my, you know, who, who is now my wife. She was my girlfriend at the time, or fiance at the time when I moved up here. Um, you know, I thought that was, you know, what it was going to be. And then, I mean, that just that also shows how the gaming community just in general is, right? Yeah. Is like totally. <laughs> is like I meet some random stranger, never met in my life. You know, first day at work, you know, with this person who's training me. Oh, you play Magic? Yeah. You know, and it's like, wow, how how great games and just gaming in general bring people together. Bring people together, you yeah. know. And again, like like I said, Jack was my best man at my wedding. By the time you know me and Chrissy yeah. got married, like he was my best man at my wedding. Um, and it's and you know it's it's cool because it's not even just the gaming community that does that, right? I have, uh, I have, it, it's kind of upside down for you guys there. Either way. I have an Avatar The Last Airbender tattoo. I have each of the uh, the four elements on my arm. And whenever people see this, even if they have no idea what it what, what it is, they like it. But the people who know are just like, you watch Avatar! And I'm like, fuck yeah, I do! Yeah. And, you know, it you bond with that over people. Or you bond over that with people. Yeah. <laughs> you bond over people. I, I, don't take that to where it sounded. But, but no, I agree with you. Like, that, and, 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 and again, that's the reason why we want to have this podcast. Yeah. You know, that's the whole, you know, again, our, our major subject today was just talking about LGSs and how they have affected our lives, you know, in different ways. But, the, you know, the main topics that we're going to talk about for this podcast are going to be based around things like that, where... It's finding the similarities with people. It's fine, you know, getting rid of the differences. I think that's one of the biggest problems in our world right now. You know, me and you both agree on this. A hundred percent is is that people are so focused on their differences that they don't, you know, take the time to you know realize we're all human beings. We all have feelings. We all have you know our lives that we live, but we have so much in, in common. You know, we do. 
I don't care if you call yourself a Republican, a Democrat, or whatever, you know, things like that. Guess what? If you like Avatar and he likes Avatar, you got something in common. You got something to talk about. You got something that's positive to talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, and so quit focusing on the, the negatives and the differences. Let's focus on those positives and the things that we have to talk about, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not to say that there isn't problems that need to be looked at and solved, but, you know, focusing only on problems that need to be solved you lose perspective of what makes solving them worth it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like the old saying, like, any, it, too much of anything is a bad thing. You know what I'm 100%. Like, like, even too much of a good thing can be a bad thing, you know? Mm -hmm. But, you know, you're talking about tattoos, and I'll show another one real quick, you know, but, you know, th this gets me a lot of <coughs> attention. You know, I have Spider-Man on my forearm here, you know? Like, anybody who knows anything at all about the MCU, I don't care if you're a casual fan, What I've been in Walmart, literally been in Walmart, and a little kid walk up, Spider-Man, you know, and point at my arm. And it's like, yeah, yeah, buddy, this is Spider-Man, you know. Like, to be, like, and again, I'm 38 years old, and to be a five-year-old kid. It's like, that difference, you know, you would think there's a huge difference. Like, we're going to have nothing in common. You both like Spider-Man. We both like Spider-Man. You know what I'm saying? And, like, that's all that matters. That's all that matters in that moment, you know. Yeah. I also get a lot of, Daddy, that's a pirate. <laughs> but it's great. <laughs> It's great because usually I'll just look at him and go, Arr, you know, and, and mess with him. You know, it's, it's whatever. I don't mind, but uh, but yeah, it's, it's part of the brand. It's all good. I, you know, I mean, so you know, for those who don't know, I'll just tell you real quick. Since this is our first episode, give you a little bit of background. I won't worry about going over it in the future. I was born blind in my right eye. Um, my optic nerve wasn't fully developed. Uh, a few years back, all of a sudden, just started catching like glimpses of light. And it was giving me really bad headaches. And my doctor gave me two options. He was like, you can have this $600 contact, you know, per year. Or you can go to Walmart and buy a $2 eye patch. And I was like, the pirate laughs for me. So, you know. And then the Slap Patch Gaming, again, I have to credit that to my business partner, Mr. Andy Cartanos. Um, he's the one that came up with it. We, came, we, had, we had a bunch of different names for the store uh, going into it. And he calls me one day and he's like, dude found the perfect name and i'm like have you though have you <laughs> and he's like sly patch gaming and i was like i'm done i'm, I'm in yes yes I'm sir in. you have found the perfect name uh, you know and so damn right uh, andy <laughs> actually real quick and, and this isn't a uh a perfect rep representation of our logo but then also you know i have another hat here these are both prototypes by the way eventually we're going to have them at the store you can you know purchase them we'll probably even post them online at some point you know for you guys you know to, to be able to post but this is our our logo here um you know it looks nothing like anybody that works there right i mean you know, so you know, this is our logo this is actually designed by our really good friend and uh, patron at the store robbie kinemuth so Robbie's like a, a really, really great, uh, uh, well, yeah, great player, great person to have around, but also a uh, really good. Um, Been playing Magic with what, him what's, what's, since. What's, since what's it called graphic design? Graphic design. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. does. He does graphic design. He so. also does uh, altars. He does altars and, and, pro altars and proxies and things like that. So um, you know, for those like looking to build a cube and don't want to put like a whole ton into it or something like that, you can you know. Um, Shout out to the man's. Ah, for sure, man. I mean, you know, that's one of the things too is like. With our podcast, you know, we want to shout people out. We want, you know, people to know that we uh, really appreciate them in the community. Um, you know, for anybody that we didn't shout out, it's not that we don't appreciate you. It's just, you know, this particular podcast. But Your time will come. Your time, your time will come, time exactly. Will come. You know, it's it's like on, uh, you know, on Command Zone where Josh and them, like, they shout out their patrons and stuff, you know, yeah. like that. Like, we, we don't have patrons yet, you know. Eventually we'll do that too, but... Uh, perhaps. But yeah, perhaps. But, you know, but we, you know, we, we don't want to charge you also for, you know, having to have your name shouted out. But Yeah. But yeah, no, I'm, and you know, I think uh, I think we can both agree that the primary, the the best part about an LGS is community building. Hundred uh, percent. You know, that, that, that's exactly why I got into it. Like I said, yeah. you know, the the whole reason why I'm doing what I do, um, and and the majority of people who who run LGSs will probably tell you the same. You know, the people that I know, uh, Quinn over at Falklandia. Um, Marco over at Battle Brothers, you know, people like that, they will tell you, like, they do it, like, <clears throat> like for example, Battle Brothers is a great example of it. They started, you know, they they, they were a, they started as a non-profit. They just wanted a place to play their 40K with, with their friends. Yeah. So they started as a non-profit. That's how, they, you know, that's how they built their store. 
and they just wanted to be able to build the community for that, you know? Yeah. Uh, Quinn has been in the magic community for many, many years, and, you know, he just wanted to be a part of a store. So you know, we do it because we love the community, we want to build the community, and we want to have, you know, a place for the people to come play. So True. Um, that's, that's what we love about LGS. So what, what's uh, what's next here for us, Spence? Well, after the conclusion of the campaign, uh, I want to talk about this week's mains. Uh, for those who don't know, uh maining a character in a game like a MOBA or a fighting game, the character you always like to go to. And uh, in the segment this week's mains, we just want to talk about our current favorite thing happening in the nerd community. Yeah. Um, what is that for you this week, Tyler? So for me personally, again, you know, being someone who's like really big into magic, um... We are on the cusp now of uh, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Super excited. I, the spoilers? Yeah, the spoilers are... Woo! And so that's what I want to talk about for a second. Is the spoilers. <laughs> uh, we got we got Praetors, you know, so Jinja Taxius is, is on Kamigawa. Yep, uh, he's back, he baby. Is, he is completely busted, by the way. I don't know if you saw... The, it's it's only once a turn. It's only... <laughs> <laughs> Only once a turn. It's only once a turn. <laughs> so yeah, if, if you guys haven't seen him, he, he is completely busted. He's like a seven man of five five. I think his ability says like the first instant sorcery or artifact gets copied. He, gets copied yeah. right each yeah. turn. Okay, so the, basically, if you think about it from magic terms, like it's a copy. Like it's not necessarily uncounterable. But you gotta got two. You gotta you gotta counter both. You gotta counter both <laughs> exactly. Okay, and then the second part is is each of your opponents' instant sorceries or artifacts get countered the first one each turn. Yeah. Okay. So like even if so you... so you have the counter spell right. Uh -huh. You have the counter spell. I'm gonna cast uh, expropriate for ten. I'm gonna get two expropriates on the stack. You got your counter spell. Cool. Counter it. Well, that oh, gets just kidding. Jin Gataxias counters that. Then you need another two counter spells. <laughs> to keep me from expropriating. <laughs> to keep yeah. me from doing at like, least one yeah. expropriate. Or, or time stretch, for example. Which or is, time stretch. Yeah, it, like, yeah, like, like there's, he, there's he is, some... I, he's really good. He is very expensive, though. I'm very excited to play with him. I think he's awesome. I'm really excited about the Tamiyo. I'm really sad that they did the Tamiyo dirty. Guys, we have a, we have a planeswalker. Phyrexian planeswalker. A Phyrexian. She has been completed. Complete. So like, she can go to any plane in the multiverse and start, you know, infecting it. Like Yeah, this is bad news bears. It's like like we thought the Eldrazi, you know? <laughs> like, you know, the Eldrazi and the Nickel Bolas, you know, we had that whole thing with, you know, War the or we had so War the Spark and all that stuff, you know, with, with Nickel Bolas. And then prior to that, we had, like, you know, the Eldrazi stuff, you know, even on Innistrad with uh, Emrakul and stuff. Those were the big baddies. But yeah. if you if you know any magic lore and you go way back... Phyrexia you know, is the original to, to Yogg big Moth baddie and all that with, stuff, right? with Yogg Moth, yeah. Yeah, Phyrexia is the the big baddie. It's and, the, and the, the OG. And they are, and they're coming back. <laughs> they and are so, back in full fucking force. I mean, we knew they were going to come back because we had Vord and Klex and Kaldheim last year. We did, which, um, which if you read the stories in that, he actually left some Phyrexian oil in the caves and stuff yeah. that he hid in in Kaldheim. So, like, there, there's even, you know... There's all kinds of storylines there. For yeah, that. It, um, things are getting messy. Yeah, you know one of the one of the other things that uh, this is this is a a very probably very inaccurate prediction, um, but I well, I had what, a, that's what predictions <laughs> are for. I had I had an idea of a really cool story beat. Nickel Bolas isn't dead. Nope. What if the Gatewatch? Is forced to bring him back to combat Phyrexia. Oh. They have to. They have to choose choose oh. the evil. Like so. Because so the, if they if they free Bolas, they also free Ugin. Yeah, that is two potential allies against Phyrexia. Yeah. So, but here's the thing too. So, and this is, goes into this is even on Kamigawa. So, the Wanderer, which we saw in War of the Spark. Yep. Right. Yeah. And, and there's been a lot of speculation on the Warrior or the Wanderer. So the Wanderer is another planeswalker that's on Kamigawa. The it, Wandering Empress. And there have been there's been speculation for a long time that that is the manifestation of Emrakul. 
I haven't heard that. That's you wild. didn't know that. No. Oh yeah. I'm not super into magic. Oh, no, there's, there's, so. there's a whole like go to Reddit. Like so, if you guys you know Reddit is great. Like you know for finding stories and stuff. So yeah. So there's this whole thing that's like, what if they are forced to unlock the Eldrazi? Oh. Because Tamio was actually Ugh. Tamio was actually the one that helped lock up uh, yeah, Ko- Ko- Kozilek and good, uh, good old great commander removal and prison on the moon. Yeah. <laughs> so well, yeah. So so she was you know she was forced to help or she was not forced to but uh, instrumental in helping lock up the Eldrazi right. So sure. it's like and now she's turned Phyrexian. Do we have to you know use Emrakul? To come out, you know, and and beat this, you know, new big baddie. So like that whole storyline, uh, you know, Kamigawa in general. So you know, you know what would be really cool is, and I don't think this is going to happen, but it would be really cool if there was a no, none of the sides are good, and it's just Nickel Bolas versus the Eldrazi versus the Phyrexians. Well, it, it, so 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 yeah. So it's like the old the old saying that like. Um, most super villains believe they're the hero. True. Like, you, you ever heard that? You know, it's like most villains like believe that they're the hero in their own story arc. You know, what I'm saying yep. they, like they think that they're doing the right thing. Uh, Killmonger. Yeah, for, one yeah, of my one yeah. of my favorites. Lex Luthor, like you know, yep. a lot of people. You know, like they they are all they believe they're the hero in the story. You know, and it's just like how we present it. So that would be really cool. To, you know, to see that. But yeah, Kamigawa. So other things that are coming out in Kamigawa that are you know other than the huge storylines. A lot of Enchantress stuff, so if you're into Enchantress, there's a lot of enchantment creatures and things like that. I love the idea of the sagas turning into creatures. It's not good for Commander, but <laughs> it's really cool for Limited. Well, it is It is for Enchantress decks. I mean... It's fantastic for Enchantress decks. Because, yeah, I cause, suppose. Because most of the times with an Enchantress deck, you want to cast the enchantment to get that draw. Yeah. And now, that enchantment actually turns into something that's Yeah, it useful. does something on entry, it does something yeah, again. Yeah, because you don't play a ton of creatures in Enchantress as, as well. So, like, for Enchantress decks, it's looking really good. Ninjutsu decks, oh my gosh, like the Planeswalker, and the Ninjutsu Planeswalker, dude. It's going to be pretty is cool. insane. They actually, I don't know if you saw the spoiler today, there was a, a, a two-mana rat that makes your Ninjutsu cost one less. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did see that. Like you know, so That's like pretty wild. You know, and, and just Yuri, you know, Yuriko's gonna have a, a field day. Oh yeah, exactly. And we, <laughs> you know, we we have wanted Kamigawa to come back for a long time because there was a lot of people who complained about what Kamigawa was back in the day, even though it had some really powerful cards. You know, things like Uncommon Sensei is top. Yeah. You know, like it had some really powerful yeah. cards back in the day. Really but top. But for the most part, you know, people had come off of the you know the. Uh, what was it? Uh, fifth on and all that stuff, you know that that whole set, you know. And so, and going into it, you know, they, they weren't as impressed. But like this set looks jam packed. Yeah, I mean, and, and we're we're literally only like twenty thirty cards in. Oh yeah, no, we we have. I I think there were about twenty ish cards today spoiled. Yeah, and. It's super exciting. The dragons look great. The dragons look super. I mean, the cool. reanimate dragon is like. I I do want to. I do want to go back quick to the wandering empress, the actual card, flash planeswalker that can activate when uh, only the turn it enters, activate her ability at sorcery speed, or at instant speed. Yeah. That's so cool. She yeah. can be a combat trick. She can, uh, you can bait someone into attacking you and then exile their fucking. Uh, Ulamog or yeah, some shit. Absolutely. I think it's super awesome. No, the mechanics on it are great. You know, it's very similar to the uh, Teferi that came out in 2020. Uh, or 2019, 2020. Um, I think it was 2020. It was Corset. It was the, the Teferi that came out that can activate on everybody's Oh, turn. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. You know, so very similar to that in that sense. I mean, it's only a one time, you know, thing, but yep. like. Um, which is more of a one-on-one thing versus a you know, commander aspect, which we play a lot of. Which yeah. again, we're going to get into. We'll have episodes on that too. Um, but yeah, we'll obviously, as you can tell, you know, we, we're really into Magic the Gathering, guys. I mean, you know, I know this is an LGS episode, and we're we're going to talk about a bunch of other nerdy stuff. For example, we're going to have a Star Wars episode at one point where my cousin uh, Nick. Um, they have a podcast, Nick and Mello's uh, podcast. Um, they are Star Wars exper- experts. So we, we, when we talk about bringing on experts for things, it's like you know, it's people who have other podcasts, you know, that are you know into those certain things that we're talking about. So or or just 
you know, big fans of the field that we want to talk about. Yeah, or about. just people that we know personally that are, you know, really into it. So so that's my positive thing. I mean, we, I've, I've, I've gone on a little bit. And like I said, check it's out o- the spoilers. It's okay. That's what this segment's yeah. for. Go, 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 <laughs> go to mythicspoiler.com. Um, it's, that's where I use, you know, for, for looking at all the spoilers. And there there's so many great spoilers for, for uh, Kamigawa right now. So super excited for that. Just a couple weeks coming up, so. Uh, my main this week is, uh, for those who are Dungeons & Dragons fans, you are abundantly familiar with Critical Role, and uh, something that I and many, many, many hundreds of thousands of other people backed, um, a project where uh, they got their own animated series. They Originally, it was going to be like a four-episode mini-series about the origins of their uh, first stream's characters because when they started their stream, they were about a third of the way through their campaign. So we didn't actually see a lot of how they got together. So they were going to do a little animated series and go into it. And, uh, you know, of their, like... $50,000 $50,000 goal. I don't remember what it was. They raised $11 million. Oh. <laughs> and uh, years down the line, Amazon Prime has picked up the project. It's called Legends of Vox Machina. And it comes out tomorrow. Oh, yeah, dude. I it remember that. It yeah. comes out tomorrow. I've seen the, the trailers have been out for a while. They even... The release date was supposed to be like two weeks from now. But like a month ago, they brought it two weeks So they early. moved it up. Yeah, they moved it up. That's 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 and not normal tomorrow. for production stuff. It's so. to- it normally gets delayed. Yeah, no, yeah. And then if it's not delayed, they usually just leave it where it is because that's the purpose of it. But they were just like, yeah, no, two weeks earlier, let's do it. And I'm super excited. I recently um, I got into Critical Role at the beginning of uh, 2018 with the second campaign, and just this last year. Um, after campaign two ended, I followed up and caught up with all of campaign one. Uh, EXU came out last year. Uh, Xandria Unlimited with Abria Iyengar in the DM instead of Matthew Mercer. That was awesome. Little eight eight episode uh, mini series for them, set in the same world, Xandria. And then campaign three started a few months ago, and that's going great. I've been loving the new parties antics but i am super super excited for legends of mox machina which starts tomorrow i i i don't know i'm sure there's information out there but i haven't spoiled it for myself yet i don't know if it's like we're gonna release an episode every week or if tomorrow the whole season is dropped i have no idea but i'm super if that happens we won't see spencer you know like it's true you (laughs) might not see me in (laughs) he's supposed to come to fnm i'm supposed to be there at fnm tomorrow but there's, there might, there might like, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm, I might be late. I might be late. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm stuck in bed right now. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm super excited for it. Uh, the cast looks really cool. Um, obviously, for anyone who's no, for anyone who doesn't know anything about Critical Role, people who participate in Critical Role, the cast, they're all friends who met in the voice acting industry. So they are all reprising their original characters from the game. Uh, They're voice acting their own characters. Uh, Matt Mercer, who is the DM for Critical Role, he is reprising the role of uh, Silas Briarwood. Um, And then they've got a bunch of other cool actors, friends of theirs mostly, uh, in the voice acting industry, and some people who uh, aren't necessarily into voice acting but are um, more like live-action actors. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, the cast looks really cool. I'm super, super excited. You know, and, and to speak on that, which I mean, I'm, I'm super excited for that too. So this is just a personal thing to speak on. Um, I have for many, many years, um, wanted to get into voiceovers and voice acting. Oh yeah. I remember you telling so, me. So about we that. talked about this not too long ago and, uh, I, I made myself a promise. Uh, you know, most people like, you know, make their new year's re- resolutions and things mm-hmm. like that. So my resolution for myself this year was that I would actually attempt to get into it. So I'm a huge fan of Steve Bloom. Okay, um, yeah. So if you guys don't know, he, he's he's voiced many many characters. Uh, uh, one that is one of my favorites was you know, he, he used to voice Wolverine um, in, in the X Men series and, and things like that. So, um, but Steve Bloom is like a, I'm a huge fan of Steve Bloom, and he does a um, 
kind of like a webinar series of teaching and you know you can get into that so that's that's my goal here in the next month or so so again my birthday is valentine's day it's a couple of, you know a couple of weeks from now uh that's that's my birthday present to myself this year Good is, for you, man. is to sign up and uh and get into voiceovers so um you know and any encouragement and stuff that i get from people like if you want to leave a comment you know let me know like oh we hate your voice or yeah you know we'd love to you know hear more of it or whatever um yeah that would be great to see in the comments too because you know, it's, it's something that it will it, it, it just be really cool. You know, especially I'm 38 now, right? Yeah. But, you know, like a couple of years from now, like you're saying, you know, you're talking about like, you know. I mean, Talis and Jaffe is 3,000 years old, so whatever. But I'm saying, like, you're, you're, you're talking <laughs> about this fine. series, right? Like, how cool would it be to a couple of years from now be like, you know, you'd be like, hey, man, I know the guy who voices, you know, <laughs> X character on this show. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, that that's just something I think that would be really good. You know, it's kind of an immortalization for myself type of thing. You know, yeah. where it's like, you know, I can get into it hopefully. And uh, I mean, the thing about it is, and this is one of the things that most people know is like, it's a very competitive industry. There's a totally lot nice. of people in it. You know, and especially with you know, we have famous actors whose voices are really good anyway. You know, and stuff like that, like Mark Hamill, for example. Oh. That's my hero right there. What like, a what a legend. Mark Hamill is just yeah, he yeah, a legend by far in so many ways. Um, but like, you know, if I could end up being like a Mark Hamill just in the voice <laughs> just in the voice acting industry, not even like his on screen stuff, like that would be, you know, that would be insane. So but yeah, yeah that's something, yeah. So you know, we're getting down to what, what's our final segment here, as we call it? Uh, I like to call it ability cooldown. Yeah. You've you've used up your ability and it's time to uh, close the show. Yeah. Um, I just want to close with you know I'm really glad that we have a chance to do this and we have a brand to put it under and and all of that you know I I love LGSs I love the idea of being able to build a community foster a community and I hope that with this podcast not only can we incur more discussions within the existing community but hopefully bring new people to the store oh absolutely you know because i'm for for the record i'm not actually affiliated with sly patch in any way no. i don't work for this guy i'm just a good friend of his yep. i i play there it's, oh, yeah. it's a place that i like to go to to hang out so so, so spencer the, actually came to me how long ago was it was it it was it was back in 2021 it was what like last summer maybe for what for when we originally started talking about the podcast, oh yeah, uh, ye, no, that would have been uh, that would have been October twenty twenty. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so I mean, it's been like well over a year that we we originally talked about it, and then, of yeah. course, you know, COVID was going on. There was all kinds of different things. You know, you were trying to get back into school. I was trying to start up a new store. You know, yeah, we had all this stuff going on. Um, but we've basically, you know, you know, you know, we've been friends for a long time, and we've we've definitely wanted to to try to provide this, you know, for people. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Spencer ain't getting paid. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, I mean you know. Not, not yet. Yeah, not, not yet. If it does well, if it does well, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see. We'll see. Um, no, but we're, but we're not doing this to get paid. Like, that's the thing about it is, like, we're not doing this to get paid. We're doing this because it's something we both love to do. Um, we like know. talking about the things we love to talk about, and we want to hear from you guys about the things we like to talk about, too. Yeah. Because this is not just about what we think. This is about the dialogue between us and the dialogue between us and you. Yeah, cuz like that's the thing that we'd love to do is like you know people are commenting on things we can we can refer to the you know to your comments, you know, and and try to give insight, you know, our own at least personal insight and things like that on, you know, what those comments are. Um possibility for segments in the future where we go over comments from last last episode. Yeah. Um but yeah, no, I'm I'm excited to see where this goes, you know, whether it's uh, just something we do weekly for the sake of the sh- the the shop, or if it gets big, or whatever. Our own sanity, as long, you know? <laughs> or just just because we like sitting and chatting, you know. Exactly. You know, uh, as long as my my main goal is one to have fun with this, and two, I hope to bring more discussion to the things that we like to talk about, and three. I want to get more people into our community here in Milwaukee. Oh, 100%. You know, I mean, and not just, even because you know, it's going to be up on YouTube, guys. Like, it's not even just in Milwaukee, you know. We're going to hopefully reach a worldwide audience, you know. And, and, and if we, you know, get that person that's over in Europe somewhere or, 
Africa or, you know, wherever, right? Or, you mm -hmm. know, Indonesia, you know, wherever it happens to be that, you know, hey, like, this is the kind of things that I've been wanting to hear about or talk about or listen to. And nobody else around here, you know, that I know is able to do that. Like, you're, you're the thing we want you to be, you're going to be a part of the Slide Pass community. doesn't matter where you're from. True. doesn't matter where you're from. Like, you're, you're going to be a part of the Slide Pass community. And there is a uh, there is a Discord, right? We do have a Discord. But yeah, we'll, we'll post social media links, Discord links, all that stuff. Yeah, we got a Facebook and things like that. In the description below and on our Facebook page. And uh, we, just, we just hope to see you around and chat. Talk Absolutely. about the things. All the things. Yep. I don't have any kind of fa fancy sign off yet. Maybe I'll think of one, but uh, we'll both think of one. This is we, we're doing this for the first time. Yeah, it'll exactly. Be, it'll be fine. Absolutely, but uh, we Part we really of the shitty quality. We really appreciate. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll have a better background. We, we're gonna have soundproofing and stuff like that eventually in the background. Right now, we're literally in my basement. Yep. Um, it'll it'll get better with time. It'll get better with time, just yep. like I do. I mean, I don't know. I'm 38. I don't, I don't have much. I don't have much time to get better. I did specify me. <laughs> You're not wrong. All right, you guys have a safe day. I love you, and uh, hopefully we'll see you around. All right. Thanks, everybody. See ya.